Hello and welcome to the Science of Psychotherapy. I'm Matthew Darlitz and as always I'm here with Richard Hill for a special on working as a therapist. Richard. Yep, great to be here Matt and great to be looking at this this actual practical aspect of working as a therapist, yep. making your therapy process work because if you don't make it work then you can't keep working so let's uh let's really get into this stuff you've been doing some very good work in bringing some experts in to talk to us that's right yes so um in this series we'll, so we'll be visiting a different sort of professional each time and um the idea is we want to cover a lot of things that are not covered you know when you um did psychology at university and these will will be talking to uh, accountants and business coaches and and these sort of people but today we're going to talk to Paul Jackson and uh, he owns a number of newspapers local newspapers um he, local news publications is his business and so i thought i'd sit down with him and just talk about advertising the the things that we go through are um, he talks about hyperlocal so that's a, a concept that we need to get our heads around uh, ways to reach the community um, what you shouldn't be doing when you're trying to reach out to the community um, a, a little bit about telling stories when it comes to advertising and marketing uh, orientation toward the city when you're setting up a practice very interesting point he makes there and we talk a little, uh, about some other you know practicalities about location and orientation and then Paul talks about what it's meant to him to be involved in uh, a local business group where you're mixing with other other businesses and then getting involved in community, uh, community things, community centers, schools, that sort of thing, and sort of giving back to the community and, and how that um, is to your advantage in terms of advertising and marketing for your business. So uh, we'll, we'll get into it and um, then we'll catch you on the other side. All right. So uh, in talking about people um, that are wanting to establish a practice or any small business, really, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the principles are going to be pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, but when we're talking about, you know, private practitioners for psychotherapy, generally we're talking local area. Yeah. And you're the man that uh -huh. uh, <laughs> helps people reach into the local area. So yeah. what are some of the principles that we should be thinking about mm. when we want to reach out? Yeah. Uh, so uh, some terminology. So hyperlocal is a, a term that's really become trendy in the last three to five years. Right. Uh, and that's really defining an area uh, of five to 10 kilometers or 10 to 20 minutes drive uh, around whether it's your shop front or base, whatever it is, when you're trying to target a local geographic area. So hyperlocal is just a few suburbs. It's not the whole city. Um, all that sort of thing. And so where that I think applies a little bit differently across different sort of um, workplaces is that if it's a trade or um, um, a construction service or a mechanic or something like that, people want to stay within that five kilometre radius, which governments have been helpful in uh, yeah. <laughs> encouraging a five kilometre radius at various times, at least in Australia over yeah. the last few years. So it's got people thinking hyperlocal or global uh, tends to be the two extremes that people are thinking. So on the hyper-local level, with a trade or a service, people really value something within five or 10 Ks, 10, 20 minutes, because they can get good follow-up service. Right. So if you're going to a mechanic, you want someone that's you know 10 minutes away rather than an hour away. Yep. So that if there is an ongoing issue, it's not going to be a hassle for them to follow up that service. That's going to be a bit different with uh, counselling practice and that sort of thing. Another thing that's interesting, I think, about professional services is the type of um, community that you're targeting. Right. We're in Western Logan, um, which is a, in Australia, which is a, a lower socioeconomic area. Um, so a counselling service or a, a um, even a uh, there's various therapies, um, even physiotherapy and stuff like that. That would be seen as a luxury item mm -hmm. in our area where it's on the Gold Coast. You know, people may see that as a weekly service that they, you know, everyone does. Right. So right. I think when you're thinking hyperlocal, you need to understand the, the demographics of the community that you're targeting. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty helpful is understanding those, some of those. And, and I guess it, it also density of population yeah. comes into play because if you're looking at a five kilometer radius and mm. you're in the, in the country yep. that's very different to being <laughs> in the middle of the city so that's it yeah yeah 
And what should we be sort of looking at in terms of ways to reach the community? Yep, um, so there's across the board, the traditional media of um, print media, radio, TV, are still really strong, uh, particularly on brand building and building trust mm -hmm. uh, within the community, which I think is very important at a hyper-local level. It's about building credibility that you're the go-to, you're the authority in that area. It's less transactional. It can be transactional, but if you want it to be transactional, you need to, you need to do something that creates an offer um, you know, right. that is encouraging a transaction. You can't just do a branding exercise and expect phone calls. Right. Um, uh, and then on, on the digital side, you've got right across the board from your organic socials through to your paid uh, click um, advertising, which can be targeted geographically as well. Mm, mm. Um, but I think hyperlocal is about, it's a fair bit about building credibility. You've got to play the long game on it. Right. You're establishing yourself as a community member. So you don't just want to be a service seen as someone coming into, you want to be seen as a service that's a part of. Right, okay. And so when we talk about um, brand awareness as opposed to a more of a transactional advertisement, mm. Mm. can we tease that out? What's the difference there? Yeah, so one is going to be your, uh, just your logo, getting your consistency on all your graphic stuff. So whether it's on your website, business cards, your advertising, consistency is going to be really important as right. far as branding goes uh, so that people easily recognize your colors your fonts, whether they're doing consciously or unconsciously, those things are important. Um, I think another thing on the branding and trust building is, is telling a story. Uh, that, again, that's really important hyper-locally, is that you're telling the stories, not about yourself, but about your engagement with community. So you're telling about local people, um, your involvement with the local sporting club, how you've helped uh, support in a time of crisis in the local community. Yeah. Um, those sorts of things where you're showing genuine community engagement um, uh, just think about our own area, we've had various periods of time where there's been some sort of crisis or uh, a community trauma, um, whether it's through car accidents or suicides or um, stuff that's going on in, in the community that a counselling service can be a part of. Um, engaging in those sorts of things and uh, being a part of those processes I think is really good on building authority locally. So, so part of that, so I'm thinking, would I approach like a local newspaper and say, can I write an article? Would that yep. be a brand awareness? It is, yeah. Um, and so you're doing educational pieces. So again, you're building authority on your end, but you're also, it needs to be, like there's, a, I guess, a range between a, in telling a story, your editorial versus advertorial thing, where you're just blatantly uh, promoting your services and right. how people can contact you in an editorial style mm. versus thinking about how you can add value to the community without uh, any strong ask. Mm. It's just you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, that's brand building. If you're more advertorial, you're going, here's the things and here's why you should choose us and here's how to contact us. Right. Uh, two very different styles of writing, both are, uh, educational, I guess, in a sense, but I think if you can give, 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 it gives you authority to ask. Okay, uh, so yeah, okay. Both. And a simple matter of just reaching out to the editor of a yep. newspaper and... Yep, uh, reach out to either marketing department, the advertising department or local editor. See, so community magazines, those hyper-local magazines, they'll yep. be, generally they'll be family owned or local people owned. Um, and so really, really easy access uh, to them. And, and I'm guessing the same for local radio, um, yep. if there's yep. a local TV network. That sort exactly, of thing. Yeah. yeah. So community radio uh, in most areas, uh, we do here, there's community radio um, and local brands like local real estate, car yards, those sorts of things do really well on, uh, on that community radio uh, side of things. And then you go bigger out from that to the more commercial radios to cover a whole city. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, is there anything that um, we absolutely shouldn't be doing? Is it, can mm. you... Look, from a, from a really grassroots community level, I think there's the way you communicate definitely needs to be lower key than high sales. Um, the more you're pushing yourself and promoting yourself, I think that gets less traction, uh, at least in the long term. It may, it, it may get you, uh, you know, a few responses straight away, but in terms of building your brand, you don't want to be the person that's always talking about yourself. You want yeah. to be the person that everybody else is talking about. Right. Um, and so by giving and being engaged with the community, um, people start talking about you, referring to you because they know you. 
you've built trust through your educational pieces, your engagement with the community, um, and now you've got people talking about you. Uh, right, it's really about, it's about um, serving, isn't it? It is, and, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's a massive part of yeah. uh, being local. Other creative ways to get the word out? In um, telling a story. So when, when you're engaging, even with straight advertising, you know, display ads that are you know, gra graphic and all that sort of thing, tell a story with that. Use imagery to tell a story as well as words. Mm -hmm. um, both are valuable to go together. Yeah, so thinking about geography, um, I think people have a usually unconscious orientation towards the nearest CBD. Mm. Uh, so whether it's a, a capital city or a, a CBD or a, a more local one like a, a mall or whatever, people are generally oriented towards a business centre yeah. uh, when they're thinking about um, products and services. So if you're going to advertise, even digitally where you're geo uh, mapping your target area, um, mm. go on the other side uh, where people are coming through you to get to a CBD. So put yourself between the people and the nearest CBD in the way you're thinking about your demographic. So people, for us, no, our, our CBD is north, so we would advertise two thirds south and one third north. Mm. Um, so getting people to go against their, uh, uh, their orientation, you need to have something you know, more to get them to go against that. They've got to, go, they've got to jump a bridge to come right. find you. So yeah. if you want to fall within their natural orientation, mm. yeah, put yourself between them and the nearest CBD. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. A lot of people would be traveling from yep. outside the CBD towards the CBD for work. Mm. Certainly if I was going to be a client, um, I, I would be familiar with a practice that is kind of on the way to work, maybe yep. uh, going the opposite direction. I might not be so familiar with the area. I guess all of these things add up to, uh, yeah. yep, that's, that's where I'm going to be going. Yeah, so. and there may be some variations on the cost of the item. I think um, when I'm going doing the weekly groceries, I very easily go in the opposite direction. Mm. Um, but if I'm taking a bigger purchase, um, the orientation is towards the CBD. You know, you think about furniture or mm. uh, looking for a builder or something like that. The orientation is towards the CBD. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that uh, I always think about too when going to a, a service is something very practical, and that's just parking. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if it's in a very, very busy area, and, and so in, a, in our situation, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, practitioners and specialists. Um, in the inner city area, and it's almost yeah. impossible to get a park. So yeah. I think for people that are starting to think about setting up a private practice, think about some very, these practicalities, you know, about yeah. where, are you, where is your client going to park? Yeah. Is it easy to get in and out of? You know, is it, uh, are they likely to be in a, in a traffic jam mm. you know, at, at peak hours? And, yeah. and so when you're thinking about location, I, I think that, yes, you need to be in the more populated areas, greater density, but then also have to think about things that your client will be thinking about is how, how long is it going to take me to get in there and am I, can I get a park, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're very involved in the local community, mm. um, running several uh, newspapers. What can therapists do in regards yeah. to connecting with people like yourself? So I think the most natural thing for any business person to be looking for is a business network. Um, uh, but I think looking beyond that, uh, looking in other community networks, so whether it's a local sporting club, there's usually hundreds of people in a sporting club. Um, and there's lots of different sporting clubs. So getting around in those and serving in those, you can be some sort of, um, you can even offer counseling support like a physio would offer, you know, volunteer as a physio or an ambulance person would offer, you know, volunteer as an ambulance person for sporting clubs. Mm. Uh, you can offer services like that to them. And same with your local schools, another great pool of people um, that are in a pretty difficult period of life. Uh, parenting's challenging, <laughs> and it's a service that you guys special in, specialize in really well. Uh, so being involved in, a school, in all the school communities, not just where your kids go, but how can you be involved in local schools uh, in a way that you're giving? Um, mm. And again, a lot of this comes down to giving without a, a direct ex expectation for a return on that giving, right? So it's giving in general, and that engagement um, over time creates opportunity. You're not looking for a transactional uh, return on investment, you're looking for a long-term one. Yeah, yeah, and I guess that return is that building the brand, it's, it's um, establishing yourself yeah. in the community and that. 
that sort of way. I guess that comes, uh, look, looking at the brand as well, there, there's, there's the brand, your logo, your uh, style guide, all that sort of thing, but there's you, especially right. if you're a single person practice you are most of the brand there, right? So mm. your involvement uh, using video, using image, having your photo uh, with the advertising that you're doing, having your photo as the expert in a column you're writing, um, having your face present at the local markets or in the local school, um, in, the, in the sporting club, you are the brand a uh, fair bit on a, on a personal business like that. Okay, brilliant. Um, so on business networks, um, there's, plenty of them around from really informal ones to really structured ones. Uh, the one that I found most effective that is global is BNI. And it's because they're so intentional about referring people, uh, referring business to each other. That's their whole purpose for existing. Mm. And so joining a group like that puts you in a community, they're geographically based, um, that is stirring up business for each other personally as well as socially. Um, and then you get to be involved through those businesses into their spheres. So uh, whether, it, and there's various other ones of, of that. Uh, so what does that practically look like if, if you're involved in one of these groups? Yeah, so it's a weekly commitment uh, of going. It's a group of whatever, 25 to 50 uh, business owners that every week are going there to tell that group of people, you get whatever, 45, 60 seconds, to tell that group of people how they can help you this week. Um, here's the sort of client I'm looking for. Here's the, the sort of business connections I'm looking for. Here's someone I'd like to be introduced to. Right. And so you've got you know, 25 to 50 people going out there looking for the things you need every week. And so you're teaching these people over your relationship, meeting with them outside of those meetings and whatever, how to market you well um, as a referral marketing approach as well. Yeah. well. I think that's really good on the local level. What's been your personal experience with that Mm. group. Uh, yeah, it's been fantastic to me. I've been really surprised. Uh, it's intensely structured, uh, BNI, but it's so powerful uh, relationally even because it's not just about the structure, it's about the relationships that form through it and the trust that's built by meeting weekly and by referring to one another. You get to know how that person does business so you know whether to refer again and that person wants you to refer again so they're working really hard on making sure that they're looking after uh, their business well and that they're a reputable business. So there's some accountability in it, um, there's relationship building in it, they're going to be a support to you when you're in your struggle times and you, you just need someone to <laughs> cheer you on. Uh, they're going to be there to celebrate when you're having your victories um, and you get to be that for them. It's a, but it's a intensely giving environment. I was really surprised by getting involved in it and fi uh, finding most business networks, well a lot of business networks, it's about you going there to sell. You're there to pitch your business. Um, I was surprised at going to BNI that when I went there and I spoke to business owners, they didn't pitch their own business, they told me about everyone else's business in the room and how I could connect with them through a conversation I'm having. They go, oh really, you should speak to this person. Yeah, they do this really well. And yeah, so it's okay. a generous giving environment. And again, it promotes that thing of giving, creates uh, relationships and trust so that people start returning yeah. uh, opportunities to you. Okay, brilliant. So I love that practical, straightforward uh, business, whatever business you're in stuff. Yep. Um, but I certainly know, you know connecting with the community was a big one for me. Um, uh, one of the things that I did quite a lot with uh, uh, certainly schools, mm -hmm. uh, but probus clubs. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. I, I went out there. Now, I'm not sure how many clients, although I did pick up uh, pick up some clients who were interested, particularly if they're they're an aged, a more uh, older community. But it also gave me a practice in honing down what I was saying, what I thought was a useful process, what I thought happiness was, how I thought it was uh, it was good to to function in a happy life, and the sorts of things that I used a lot with clients along the track, refining my understanding of what I think I understand. Look, in, in the early days for me, I went to some different community groups and I gave um, free presentations. I remember I did a, a bit of a series uh, with a, a local church doing um, uh, uh, some presentations on psychological first aid and that sort of thing. And that, and that sort of sort of put me on the map in the local area. So very important. As Paul was saying, you know, this, this is a lot of giving. You don't expect a, an immediate reciprocal, um, you know, 
uh, something back, but um, you're, you're you're establishing yourself uh, in the community as the one you know with with the authority in this in this area. So, yeah. and that thing of expertise, that thing yeah. of expertise, and certainly uh, I spoke to quite a few business clubs uh, as well, and I, I joined, and and, and mm-hmm. I've still got friends from there which which right. are terrific you know and and so that's a great thing that uh, and I call them every now and again for some business advice which which is a really useful thing to build up not only the network that builds your business but the network that supports your way of doing business yes absolutely and and you know as as you heard paul say it's been integral for for his business um adventures and um not just for the relationships to get business but also um you know i know here that he's received a lot on the technical side Hmm. um of of running a business uh in the local area so anyway so i hope you get a lot out of that um next time we're going to be talking to an accountant uh who his actually his his father and and his brother are psychologists so he knows what he's talking about when it comes to accounting but also about the practice of psychology uh, so look out for that one, and uh, and then we'll have we'll continue the series with some other professionals as well. Uh, but for now, thanks for dropping in to the science of psychotherapy, and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.